Hello and welcome to Run and Play Do Stuff where today we can finally say we're doing Fantasia Land! <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's heavy <laughs> right so this is our little aeronaut cabin uh, so all of the rooms here are twin rooms so one bed on either side and um, we've got these little reading lamps here and um, you get this little newspaper and I'll go through what that is in a minute you get that when you check in um, then we've got round here, little bits of theming here, look, some goggles, and I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be, neckerchief or something, I think. Um, and you can see literally the whole thing is completely themed, the lights are themed, we've got all this pipe work up here, and then we've got this sort of like metal grate ceiling. Uh, TV on, uh, when you first come in that's got like a Fantasialand thing on, it plays wind noises, which is quite cool, isn't it? Um, bin, stool down here, which does come up and down which is great for small people like us and then you've got your storage down there we've got little drawers underneath the bed as well which Adam's going to demonstrate there we go uh, and then we've got this which is very very stiff <laughs> but there you go so you've got but well, you have got hangers in here to hang your clothes up but as you can probably tell um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> people, so yeah. Like, if you're a normal size. Person. So if you're hanging kids' clothes, I mean, fair enough. Yeah. But for adult clothes, it's not very big. Um, and you've got a hanging hook here. This is the bathroom. So you've got a door here to the bathroom. Slides up and down. It's got the beautiful cushion clothes as well. And then through. Oh God, that was a bit violent, wasn't it? Um, his bathroom. Hello. Um, so we've got this big bright mirror here. Obviously, your essentials: your sink and your toilet. Um, and your storage there uh, and then we've got a shower um, ours is a bit funky it sort of sprays up from here doesn't it there's mm. like a gap in the pipe work and it just spurts everywhere but um, soaked the floor this morning yeah and then we've got a window here which only one side opens even though it's got another thing on there which is a bit odd but um, and then you can see there's some more hotel rooms across there um, you've got the more back of people's bathrooms there and um, we have some seen some people sort of climbing out the window and sitting on this bit um, and then round here you can see Ruckberg and Fly so obviously these up here are not the best view rooms that you can get however there really isn't much of a bad view is there no and if you look at what we've got here's the door look you've got this little Slide a thing here. Uh, if you come out here, you can literally see fly. So this I believe is the second launch. And I believe the first launch. I think this might be the first launch here. And then this is the view from just outside our room. Look at that. Look at that. Stunning. So what's this little ditty we've got here, Adam? This is our aeronaut briefing. So this is what you get when you first check in. As you can see, we've got the room number on the front, so you can never get lost. And it comes with a map here of the hotel. 
So how did you get this upside down? Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> there we go. So we are here, I think, aren't we, with this one? Yes, we'll see something. Uh, C48. So we're on uh, row zero, which Level obviously zero. ground floor, which we thought was going to be um, quite low down. But actually, you've seen the view from outside. We're still quite high up, and there's still like four um, floors above us, isn't there? Mm. Um, now, up here, I think it's at the top of number uh, gate C, there's a viewing platform which we'll go to at some point, which gives you sort of the best views over Rutberg. I noticed as well, I didn't notice this last night, but on the back, you get a map. Yeah, of... I was checking this. So, yeah. obviously, you can see Fly. This is the main entrance to Fly, and we get ent entrance to Fly through here, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then you can see the main entrance to the hotel. Which has all the hotel facilities right here. Mm hmm. Yeah. And what else have we got in there? We have got. Let's have a look. You get a, um, oh, and the key was in here oh, yeah, as well. Was, the key yeah. was in that bit, but I've obviously taken that out so we can get in the room. Oh, so that's like a little a letter from letter Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh. He wrote it himself. Um, a logbook. Yeah, so this has got all sorts of letters from Charles Lindbergh. That you can. Well, basically, it is supposed to be his logbook. It's a little logbook yeah. that they've made. Um, and that's in English as well as German. I don't know if it's in Dutch and French because most is in. Oh yeah, it is. It's in four different languages, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, then over and here. Postcards. They did say that if you want to send them to somebody, that they will um, post them for post you. Them out for you, but I think we might just keep them. Yeah, and it's I mean it's it's not 1997 anymore, is it? No. Who's sending postcards these days? Just but yeah, they look really it. nice. And oh, this is importantly our, yeah, our boarding pass, pack boarding pass. So this is what gets us entry into Fantasia. Uh, and then we get these, which is a fast track to fly. So this is one per person per day, uh, and that includes the day that you arrive as well as the day that you leave. So we're doing three days, so we get four tickets each. So you just take them and you go through a special entrance to go through uh, into Fly. So even though we didn't manage to get in the park yesterday because um, we were travelling so late, we still get a fast track. So one day we're going to be able to do two fast tracks, aren't we? Here's our hotel room. Yeah. And this is how close we are to Fly. Right here. You can actually see look. down. You see the track literally there, look. That's yeah. the track. And the launch is just here. Yeah. There's a launch just here, so it just goes straight past our balcony. And, uh, twice. Twice a year. So this is a launch, this bit here is a launch, the first launch, and then the second launch goes up behind it, up there. So you get amazing views of fly. <laughs> oh, it's just gone on the launch. Uh, it's it. so, because I don't really, no, it's, yeah. so hard to, it's so hard to understand where it is and where it goes because it just ducks and dies all the time. Yeah. But the view is absolutely incredible. And we haven't even been up to the observation tower yet, have we? No. We to do that in a bit. Yeah. In fact, we could do that now. We could do that now, yeah. This is the observation tower. We've got a nice Charles Lindbergh sign there with a little bench to sit on and enjoy this view here. So, look at all of this. How much track is there to fly? It's amazing. It's crazy, like how much they fit in this space. It's just everywhere. It's amazing. Such a good view up here. Now, in terms of pricing for Charles Lindbergh, I think we pay about the equivalent of two hundred and eighty pounds a night for this. So, uh, obviously, not a cheap hotel. However. I do think you have to consider with this one that you do get your park tickets included. Yeah, which the other hotels here you don't. No, Lingbao and Matamba don't include no, the park tickets and they're still like nearly £200 a night. Mm -hmm. um, plus, you could easily, when we were looking, you can easily spend £100 a night on a hotel in Cologne or in the local area. Which then you'd also have to get and transport, yeah. Yeah, you'd have mm -hmm. to get transport and then you'd have to pay for your tickets which are like 40 something pounds each, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Uh, plus here you do get food included as well. Yes. Again, at the other hotels, I don't know whether you're getting breakfast included, but this one is on a, on a half board basis and the other two aren't. So you get breakfast and tea in Erwerk, mm -hmm. which is the restaurant in yeah. Rutberg. And then your evening meal is a free, free cost meal, which mm. is really good, really good. Yeah, so there's no scrimping on that, is there? No. Erwerk's no. a really, really nice restaurant. Adam really loves the chairs. Yes, yeah. yeah. They've got this really cool chairs that like 
come out and they spin. They're like attached like, to the uh, chair leg, aren't they? Yeah. On a hinge, so you can yeah. just sort of like m move around. They're really, really cool. <laughs> I really like it. It's a yeah. really, really nicely themed restaurant. Um, and there's some big, big food portions as well, isn't there? Yeah, like the mains are huge. Mm. Um, but the starters and the, the puddings mm. are quite a decent size. Yeah. Because usually I can't handle a free course meal. Mm. There are some adventurous flavours on the menu, so if you are a picky eater like I am, then just be warned of that. Especially because obviously um, there is always going to be a small language barrier there if you don't speak German and obviously asking for not to have certain things on the burger. <laughs> yes. We, um, I wouldn't risk it. <laughs> we, we accidentally ordered a cappuccino last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unintentionally. Yeah. Um, because the lady didn't speak English and we don't speak German. No. Um, <laughs> so she offered her coffee and one thing with Adam, if you offer him anything, he will just say yes. So I don't always just say yes. He does. So we ended up with no, two coffees. And then this morning we had breakfast as well. Um, it's a very continental breakfast. There are sort of um, cooked breakfasty sort of things like sausage and bacon, and there was some eggs, weren't there? But obviously none of the sort of traditional English stuff that you get, like beans and tomatoes and mushrooms and any of that. Um, loads of like croissants, breads, um, oats, granola, some oh, compotes, um, and some sort of like I don't know. Some people were putting things in um, little like dip bowls, weren't there? Like fruit and chocolate and stuff. Did you not see that? No, I didn't. Yeah, like I the comp they were that. getting the compots oh. and putting them in like little these little dishes that you can get. Um but I don't know. I didn't really quite understand how to pair it all together really, did you? No. It was um but it's really good. There's loads of really good stuff there. It's really good breakfast. So it's night three, and we've just had our final meal at Erwerk, Erwerk. Erwerk the, um, the restaurant that, that I've got here at Charles Lindbergh. Um, so three nights, three meals. Um, yeah, I've got to say that the food here is, is really good, isn't it? Notch. Good quality really, really food. Good. Really, really yeah. good. Yeah. So they serve your mains, they're either burgers, pastas, or um, like loaded fries mm. um, or frits as they call them here which advertisers mm. come in on a shovel but they don't We've no got in about ours that. came in a bowl we had yeah. it the first night and it came in a bowl and um, they also get served with two burgers as well they're the two small do-it-yourself burgers yes yeah you get two little burgers and then four pots of fillings to put on the burgers mm. mm -hmm. um, and then you get a starter and a pudding um, this free cost meal is included in your hotel reservation so that's really good um and the starters and the puddings, they are pretty decent sized, aren't they? Yeah, the mains yeah. are massive. Big They're mains. Like, the burgers are huge. Mm. And obviously, like if you get the frits, they come with two burgers. Yeah. Two smaller burgers. But still, they're big, big portions. Mm. They are um, big portions. But yeah, the, the starter and the dessert aren't too bad, are they? No, which is good because I can't often handle a free cost meal. Um, so I was worried about the portion size, but yeah, portion size is good for pudding and for starter. So for the starters, my favourite have been um, the parcels. They are advertised on the menu as pasta, but it's not really pasta. Nice. And one of the waitresses called them dumplings. Um, so we had them most nights. I did have one of the salad bowls yesterday, which I wasn't I wasn't too keen quite on that big, one. Actually, actually, yeah, compared to what we big said one. about the portion size, mm. but actually the, the, the poke bowl was, big. was quite mm -hmm. um, big compared to those, wasn't it? Yeah, and then one night you had tata. Yes. Yeah, the tata. Which is like, it's advertised as well, it's advertised as beef, but I don't think it was when it came. It was like a tomatoey. It was like three bits of rye bed rye bread with toppings on mm. um, that wasn't bad um, I prefer the dumplings but even the dumplings if I'm honest the starters are my least favourite course no but, but I really do, do enjoy I don't think the choices is good yeah. as no the choices others. aren't as good but I really do enjoy the parcels
So one of the benefits of staying at Charles Lindbergh is that you get exclusive access to bar 1919, which is not open to um, Fantasialand guests. Erverk is, um, so guests during the day can come in and use Erverk, but bar 1919 is only for Charles Lindbergh guests, and they do these really nice, uh, as well as like normal like craft beers and stuff. They do these um, cocktail bowls, which we want to try. So we're going to go get changed, and we're going to go down there now. Here we are, we're all dressed <laughs> up lads, so we're going to go enjoy a cocktail. Shall we go? Aye. So we've just come out of Bar 1919, had a delicious cocktail bowl in there, and we thought we'd show you Ruckberg by night, because it is absolutely stunning, isn't mm. it? And this is another perk of staying in the Charles Lindbergh Hotel. You have access to this from 8.30 till midnight. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you get to explore Ruckberg at night. And it's just absolutely amazing. Like, I mean, it's amazing by day, it's amazing by night. It's all lit up. These um, manhole covers, I don't know if you can, you can barely see it, um, they were lit up yesterday. They were lit up yesterday and they had the smoke coming out of them. Yeah, it yeah. Looked really cool. They were smoking and they were lit up red, um, mm. but they're not today. In fact, that yeah. one had a blue light coming on it yes, as well. Yes, it did. So, um, changes every day, apparently. Um, and you can see all the lighting. In fact, you can see all of the lighting across here and you can see down in the it's there just about I think um, obviously the camera doesn't quite pick it up as well as it is uh, comes across in real life but I mean that looks pretty impressive behind us mm. uh, you've got these beautiful street lights these old school street lights and the the cranes with the pier in fact they were oh yeah they are actually you can see they're pulsing uh, and the ones across there pulse as well so it's just the level of detail is just unreal isn't it um, and when you're up, there's a viewing platform up there, which I think we spoke about before. Like when you're up there at night, it's just yeah, it looks amazing, amazing looking down, isn't it? I've seen all the lights. So we've checked out of our hotel room now and then we headed straight here to Rookborough and we got a front row Rookborough, sorry, <laughs> Rookborough um, and we got a front row ride on Fly which was absolutely amazing yeah, Stunning way to camp on, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, it like definitely um, So it's our final day in the park today um, One of the perks of staying at the hotel is that you get park entry every day of your stay including your check-in and your check-out day. And you also get fast tracks for fly for all of those days as well. Yes. So we've still got two left because got we haven't really yeah. had to use them. So midday is probably going to get up to like 70 minutes is what it did yesterday. Mm. So we're going to use them then. Use them we'll then. Pass everyone that's queuing for yeah. it. We tend to find like here, I don't know if it's because of the, the the amazing throughput they've got, but it tends to peak ridiculously at like midday, doesn't it? Like mm. they'll be, they'll hit an hour, fly and Taran 
and then throughout the afternoon they drop right down to like 20 minutes don't they yeah so yeah. i would definitely morning and um, prioritize the the big ones and then in the midday you can do things like mystery castle and talicum which never have a bit really big queue no. um, and then you can come back to the the bigger coasters in the evening because they don't they they drop right down don't they no front row on fly though was absolutely phenomenal it was i don't think you get as much quite as many g's going through the corners as you do um sort of towards the back of the train but certainly like when you're hitting the higher points when you because there's a lot of hills isn't there a lot of dips and you get you really float right up don't yeah you, you do the top of that. especially on that second the top of that second launch we were practically catapulted over the hotel weren't we yeah really really good, really good. <laughs> so loud, definitely recommend you for a row if you get the chance. Yeah. But Charles Lindbergh, Hotel Charles Lindbergh is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I'm so like, glad. Uh, we weren't sure, originally, when we planned to do Fantasyland, we were going to stay sort of nearby, weren't we? Try and keep costs down and stuff. Um, but do you know what? For the we, it wasn't that much extra to stay. No, there, really. And when you consider the park, the kitchen, your food, yeah, food, and the perks that you get, it is really good. Absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Because you get your free course meal, you get your breakfast. As we mentioned, you get your park tickets, you get your fast track fly, yeah, and just the theming around the hotel is yeah. really good. Really yeah. good. It's just absolutely amazing. You yeah. get a burger nights as well. Which yeah, let's be honest. If you're in a hotel yeah. like nearby, what would you be doing? Mm. Um, whereas you, here, you can wander around and can, see yeah. Wurberg at night, get all your, your photos for your Insta. And even in the daytime, you get exclusive views of Rookberg that you don't get if you're not seeing in a hotel mm, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Certainly good for vlogging purposes. You can get some good vantage points of the coast, can't you? Yeah, yeah. It's been definitely. absolutely amazing. It I has been, it. it has been. We're going to go now and enjoy the rest of Land. So go and check out the channel for day one and day two vlogs. We've also got Port of Ventura coming on later this year. So subscribe to us for that. Give us a like and a comment. We've had an amazing time. We will see you next time we do stuff.